In this episode, no Steam for Linux, free H.264 for streaming, and the top 10 Linux distributions. QuickSurf Internet Media presents Linux News Log, separating the Linux and open source signal from the noise. Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Phoenix, Arizona, here in Studio C1 at QuickSurf Internet Media. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Head on over to techpodcast.com and uh, check out all the other technology-related shows over there. Let's go ahead and get into the stories for Season 11, Episode 5. ServerWatch has a top 10 list of Linux server distributions. Uh, the number one, obviously, is Ubuntu, uh, followed by Red Hat and SUSE, and uh, four and five, Mandriva and Xandros are based off of uh, Red Hat and Debian, which Ubuntu is based off of Debian. And then Slackware, which I thought was kind of interesting because I've not played with Slackware for quite some time. Uh, then number seven is Debian, Viata, CentOS, an unbreakable Linux, which is really Oracle's version of Red Hat. So kind of weird. But uh, anyway, pretty neat list. He's got some verbiage to uh, justify where, why it's where it is on the list and that sort of thing. So check it out. Let's talk about our sponsors for this episode. Go to Assist Express. There are a variety of tools that let you remotely support a client, colleague, or friend. But the only one I trust and rely on is Go to Assist Express the best remote support tool designed for small to medium-sized businesses, and it's brought to you by Citrix. Why go to Assist Express? Well, it has exceptional performance, it's very easy to use, and it's secure. IT professionals, really anybody who doesn't have time to squander with a tool that's slow or unreliable, will appreciate GoToAssist Express. With GoToAssist Express, you have no IT maintenance or updating. It's so fast you'll be on the other computer troubleshooting or providing a tutorial or doing whatever you need to do within seconds. And it's consistently reliable. My audience can try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit gotoassist.com slash techpodcast. I repeat, my audience can try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit gotoassist.com slash techpodcast. From CNET's Deep Tech uh, blog, there's a story here Stefan Shanklin wrote, H.264 is free forever for video streaming. So this is not uh, necessarily a revelation or unexpected, but the licensing terms have changed to where if you stream H.264 over the internet, you don't have to pay any royalties forever. We all kind of expected that to change given that uh, they're receiving some heat from things uh, such as Google's WebM video codec and Ogthiora for the those who are Firefox users. So um, it'll be in pretty interesting to see uh, how this plays out in the long term to see who wins out. The thing I find interesting uh, is that they still license H.264 for such things as uh, Blu-ray players, DVD players. Uh, you know, cameras that encode in H.264, you know, all that other stuff. Those you still pay licensing fees for. But if you create the content and want to stream it, you don't have to pay per stream, which is actually pretty nice. So uh, from PC World's Business Center, what will Ubuntu 10.10 .10 look like? Well, we already know it's going to have multi-touch because I've reported that on that a couple of times now. Um, but in addition to that, one of the things that they were saying is it'll have a simpler installer. Uh, processor support will be updated. Um, you won't be able to run it on anything older than an i686 or basically Intel's P6 microarchitecture. If you have anything older than that, you won't be able to. Not really a big issue for the vast majority of users. There are a couple of people that want to run it like on an, on an old Pentium, but, uh, you know, or a, or a 486 or a, you know any number of of uh, you know old processors but uh, you know you won't be able to do that um, the default environment and applications you'll get to uh, 2.6.35 of the Linux kernel which has a bunch of security enhancements in it 
um, and an update of the GNOME desktop to 2.31. There's some application switches around and application updates, so uh, definitely worth uh, taking a look at that. The Ubuntu Software Center will uh, is updated, um, so that's good. And as I previously reported, multi-touch, which will allow use for such devices as, as Apple's Magic Trackpad, or if you happen to be on a tablet type device and the screen serves as a trackpad as well, you know, and a, you know, a touch screen. So it'll be pretty neat to see it once it's in action. Red Hat is offering its cloud APIs as an industry standard. I ran across this over at PC World. As the industry call for cloud interoperability glow, grows more fervent, open source enterprise software company Red Hat has submitted its cloud platform called the Delta Cloud to the DM. TF, otherwise known as the Distributed Management Task Force, as a potential standard for cloud interoperability, the company has said on Wednesday. We're recording this on Thursday, so this is yesterday's news, but uh, still pretty neat. Um, I'll be interested to see the, a lot of the reasonings for doing it is because they think that cloud computing, the standard itself, should not be controlled by any one single vendor it should be controlled by a third party governance body so it's nice that they've submitted it but the real question is whether or not the you know the DMTF uh, is willing to adopt it or maybe a mishmash of some other things that were submitted you know get a combination of that so it'll be pretty neat to see how this all turns out from ZDNet's Linux and open source blog, uh, there's some interesting news again in the Red Hat front. I know we're having a little bit of a Red Hat heavy uh, episode here, but uh, they've they've been kind of busy the, in the last week or so. Um, basically, what's going on with this is their life support life cycles typically seven years. Well, they're extending that to ten years for Red Hat Enterprise three and four. So those that were on Red Hat Enterprise 3 that are coming up on a, an upgrade cycle in October now have an additional three years to uh, make that transition. They can optionally buy another three years of support for that. So very good. Um, I wish Microsoft would do this. Jeez. From Engadget, uh, I ran across this uh, story and I'm a little disappointed because I previously reported that uh, you know, Valve was working on a Steam client for Linux and, you know, there were screenshots and, you know, pretty convincing proof, in my opinion, that they were doing it. Well, not so much. Um, Valve Marketing VP Doug Lombardi has officially confirmed, quote, quote, there is no Linux version that we're working on right now, end quote. So, very disappointing. Obviously, um, you know, we'll have to see if they're just doing it because they really, you know, if you said that because they really aren't working on a Linux Steam client, if you ask me, I'd be, you know, why wouldn't you? Um, or if they're, you know, basically lying, trying to get a good surprise when they do actually release it. So it'll be kind of interesting to see how that all turns out. From Technologizer, uh, Jared Newman wrote a story. If the PS3 is jailbroken, can we have other OS back? In this article, the argument he's saying is now that uh, the PS3 has been jailbroken, like what we previously reported on, what he's basically arguing is that you removed the other OS option because you said you were protecting the integrity of the PS3 platform. But now that it's been jailbroken, so to speak, that integrity is, is no longer valid, and thus the reason for removing the other OS option is... is no longer a valid reason either. So with all that being said, can we just have it back? I agree with them. Uh, if you ask me, they should have never removed it in the first place, but they did. And now that it's been jailbroken, you might as well just put it back because they're going to find a way to put it back. Whoever jailbroke it is going to find a way to put it back anyway, so it doesn't really matter. That's pretty much it for this episode of Linux News Log. As always, I thank you for watching and or listening. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, linux.quicksurf.com. You can follow me online, uh, twitter.com slash Adrian underscore Bacon. In the show notes, I have a bevy of other ways of getting a hold of me, including email and that sort of thing. So uh, vis visit us on the web. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode.
See you then. Bye.